Hi everyone, Miss Locum here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to start an artwork inspired by the artist Claude Monet. For today, you'll just need one thick piece of paper and a pencil that has an eraser on it. We're going to hold our paper portrait style, or tall, and your first step is to find the halfway point of your paper and move just a bit above that, maybe about an inch. There, you'll draw a straight line that goes across your paper. We divided this paper into two sections because the bottom part is where we'll be drawing our water lilies, and the top part is where we're going to add our Japanese style bridge. Before we move any further on our final paper, I'm actually going to set that aside and take out a sketchbook to show you a few different ways of drawing water lilies. Try practicing with me. So the first way I like to draw water lilies is starting with a wide U shape or a smile, and then I'll find the middle of the bottom of that, make a little mark. I'm then going to take the top of my U shapes and connect it to that center dot. I do want it to be pointy on both ends of that. For my next petal, I'll make a mark where I want the point to be, and I'll connect it to the center of my first two petals. And I'll repeat that in between my new petals that I just created. And that is it for your first water lily shape. For the second style of water lily, I'm going to start it the same way, where I draw that wide U or that smile shape. Again, I'm going to mark where the center of the bottom is and create those two starter petals from the top to that center point. But this time, instead of having it growing out of the middle, I want to create another full petal shape that is in between my other two petals. I can erase any extra lines that might overlap. And I will draw petals growing out from behind those three main petals. I don't want the bottom to end at a point. I want the top to be a point and the bottom point to be hidden behind the other petals. I'm also going to add some additional petals hiding behind those and finish it with one bigger petal at the top. And that is it for our second style of water lily. Our third water lily is our most complex and it's very different than our first two, but it's still fun to draw. We're gonna start this time Instead of a U or a smile, we're going opposite of that. I'm going to do a small bump or a frown, and then we'll close that off with just a very shallow curve. It almost looks like we started a sunset here. On top of that, we're going to create petals that are growing all the way around, but not on the bottom, because the bottom, our petals are going to be shorter and fatter. These petals would be facing us. Our next set of petals will be right above those, and they're going to overlap with that first shape that we made. We'll go in and erase any of those extra overlapping lines. I'm going to make this lily a little more detailed by adding some texture dots in the center portion of my lily, and I will put some texture lines in my petals and even go through and add a few additional petals in between my back petals. If I want to add details to any of my other water lilies, I can do that too. So I'll throw a few texture lines coming out from the bottom of my lily number two, and then put some nice swirls growing out. I can even put a few bumps right along the bottom of my lily to show where it would be sitting on its lily pad. For lily number one, I can do the same thing with a bumpy line. And instead of swirls, I'll just do some lines with dots growing out of the top and add some wispy petal textures in there. Feel free to mix and match any of these designs. These are just ideas for your water lilies. Okay, back to our final piece. Once you've decided which type of lily style you like best, we're going to draw about three to five on the bottom part of our artwork. I'm going to stick with lily style number one, and I'm going to do three. I'll plan out where they go by starting with the U shapes exactly where I want those water lilies to be. You'll see I drew them very big, and I spread them out to really fill that space as best as I could. Thank you. 
Our next step is to add lily pads. Now, a lily pad would usually be this type of shape, but that would be if you were looking at it from above. Our lily pads are going to be looked at from the side because our water lilies are sitting on top of them. We really want a shorter, wider shape instead of that tall bird's eye view shape. So I'm going to try and create that underneath of my water lily. And I'll do that starting behind the water lily and it's like a sideways oval with a little dip in it. I want to do that to all the water lilies on the bottom of my paper. With all of our water lilies and our lily pads done, it's time to move on to the top part of our artwork. Up here we're going to be drawing two bushes and our Japanese style bridge. So to begin, on either side I want to create a sort of triangular shrub or bush that's growing right off the side of the page. Don't make these too wide or you'll run out of room for your bridge. I think I'll add some berries or fruits to my bushes and then it's time to create our bridge. We'll start our bridge right on the waterline in between our bushes and I'm just going to draw a curve and I want it to be about the same distance on either side from the bushes. Now for the top of the bridge, I'm going to start right out of the left bush and end it on the right bush. You do want these to be pretty even. We don't want our bridge to look slanted, so feel free to touch up and fix up as you go. To create the bottom of our bridge, we're going to draw another line a little bit above that bottom line that follows that curve. And the same thing above that top line, except a bit closer so it looks thinner. Then we'll add the bars of our bridge by drawing really tall number 11s and we're going to do that all the way across, kind of like fence posts. Sometimes after this step it can be a little difficult to tell what is the part of the bridge and what's the background. So a little trick I like to do is just very, very lightly shade in the parts that are the bars of my bridge. If you want your bridge to be even more detailed, we can create a little walkway behind the bars of our bridge. And I just wanna make sure I don't draw through the bars. And I can just draw a few more lines in there, making it look like it's made out of wood. That way people can walk over our bridge. I'll add one more thin line above that, and then you are all finished. And that is it for this week. How did you do? Next week, we'll be going over how to color in certain parts of our artwork. Using crayons, we're going to use some new special techniques to color in our water lilies, our lily pads, our bridge, and our bushes. I look forward to talking to you then. All right, everybody, until next time, bye-bye.